All right, today I want to show you how to do this. But we're going to do it on the mandolin. I think this guitar style accompaniment is really an overlooked way of playing back up on the mandolin. And while it doesn't outright replace those tricky chop chord shapes, it does come in handy for situations like when there's no guitar player at your jam, or maybe there's already five other mandolin players chopping on the backbeat. Or maybe you're playing in a smaller jam where you're the only player playing chords. You might wanna offer more sustain and structure in your backup. And if you've never done this before, I'm gonna show you how to do this in this video. We'll start off with the basic boom chuck pattern. Then we're gonna add in some right hand variations and some licks and fills to spice things up. Then at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this same thing over every single major and minor chord so that you can do this guitar style accompaniment on any song that you want to. When you're ready, let's dive in. So the boom chuck is key here. And if you've never heard that funny phrase before, it's just a term that guitar players use to denote this bass motion between a root and a fifth. And that's what we're gonna do here with your G chord to start with. We'll take our basic open G chord and we're gonna start by finding a low root a low G, which we just happen to have an open G string right here for. And then our fifth for our G chord is a D note, which just happens to be our open D string right here. So we're gonna alternate between those two. So that's the boom of the boom chuck, right? We're playing the root on the first beat of the measure and the fifth on the third beat of the measure. But for the chuck, we're just gonna play our higher strings on our G chord on the second and the fourth beats. So we'll play root, chuck, fifth, chuck. Just like that. And that's the core of this whole video, the boom chuck pattern. The only trick is now we have to go through our other chords and find the roots and the fifths for those shapes as well. So next, let's check out our C chord and our basic open C shape is like this, right? The only issue is that we don't have a low root in this shape. And the lowest possible C that we could play is right here on our fifth fret. So let's start with our ring finger right there on the fifth fret of the G string. And our low fifth is just gonna be our open G string right here. So this shape requires a little bit of motion with your ring finger between your fifth fret on the G string and the open string. And then for the chuck of our pattern now, we're gonna play our D, A, and E strings for our open C shape while we move our ring finger up and down for the root and fifth. It's a little bit trickier, but try it with me. All right, one more real quick. Here is our D major boom chuck pattern. This one's a little bit easier. We don't have to move our left hand quite as much. We'll start with our open D shape and our lowest possible root is right here on our D string, right? Then the fifth of our D major chord is A. We have an A right there on the second fret of our G string. So here's our boom. Then we'll just add in the chuck on the higher strings. All right, you got three chords down. Let's see if we can put those together in a basic chord progression. One for a song that you might know, the classic Carter family, Bury Me Beneath the Willow, which we actually did a lesson for that tune right here on the channel. You can check it out here in the cards above. Take a listen to the melody against this mandolin guitar style accompaniment and see what you think. One, two, a one, two, three, four. By the way, there's kind of like an inordinate amount of handouts to go with this video. If you want your own personal copies of these PDFs, you can grab them over on my Patreon at the link in the cards above, but you'll see all this stuff on screen as we go through this video. And we'll start off by checking out this chord progression for Bury Me Beneath the Willow. So just with that basic boom chuck pattern, we start off with two measures of G here. Then quickly transition to our C shape. Back to G. then D for two measures. Back to G. Then C.
quick G for one measure, quick D for one measure, and then back to G. Now you're starting to sound like a guitar player, but I'm sure you can already see the challenge of transitioning from one chord to the next seamlessly while making sure that every single note sustains as long as possible. So take your time here, and when you're ready, let's try it together with the melody. One, two, a one, two, three, four. All right, now that you have this basic boom chuck pattern down, we're gonna add in some different right hand patterns to really spice things up. Check it out here with our guitar style backup patterns page. So we'll use the basic boom chuck as our template, and then we're gonna add in some variations here, the first of which, just adding in an upstroke after the second beat in the figure. Check this out. Next, let's see if we can add the upstroke after the fourth beat instead with this variation. And you guessed that we can mix both those together and add upstrokes after the second and the fourth beats and it would sound like this. Next one here is a little bit different. Sometimes you hear guitar players play single notes, almost cross-picking across the chord shape. And we can do the same thing here with this arpeggiated figure on the first and second beats. Check this out. We can do a similar thing on the third and fourth beats of the measure like this. You don't have to go across all the strings like that. You can do some partial arpeggiation like this as well. If you want to get real fancy, you can play all eighth notes and it would sound like this. So we're gonna come back to that chord progression for Bury Me Beneath the Willow and use a few of these patterns to make things a little bit different. Check it out. One, two, a one, two, three, four. So check this out, every time we play a G chord, we're gonna be adding in an upstroke just on the second beat. And every time we get to the C chord, we're gonna be arpeggiating on the third and the fourth beats. Then every time we get to the D chord, we're gonna be adding in an upstroke after the second and the third beats. And we'll stick with those chord related patterns for the whole chord progression, starting with your G chord here. Up on the second beat, arpeggiated on the third and fourth beats. Up on the second beat. Up on the second and fourth beats. Just up on the second beat for the G again. Arpeggiated on the third and fourth beats. Up on the second beat. Up on the second and fourth beats. Just up on the second beat again. Nice work, and obviously you don't have to stick to these same right hand patterns for every chord or for a certain amount of measures. You can mix and match them as you want to, but just for our purposes here, let's see if we can play this as written with the melody as well. One, two, a one, two, three, four.
right, and our last step here is to add in some melodic fills to connect some of the chords together. You might hear some guitar players like Doc Watson or Billy Strings do this, and we're definitely taking a page out of their book for this version of Bury Me Beneath the Willow here. One, two, a one, two, three, four. So here we're just building on the same version of those patterns that we played earlier for this song and adding in those fills in a few select places. First up, going from the G to the C chord, we're playing this fill. Just walking up your G string to this C note on the downbeat of our C chord. So here's what the first line would sound like. Similar idea with the next line, we're playing a small chromatic line leading to the D string on the downbeat of our D chord, right? And then when we get to the D chord, we're playing kind of an interesting descending line. Where you have to stretch up with your ring finger all the way to the fifth fret, down to the fourth fret, and the second fret on your G string to get this descending bass. Here's what this line sounds like now. The next line is actually the same as the first line, so you got this. And then the last line here, we do a couple of different melodic ideas. First with this walk up on the G chord, landing on your open D string at the beginning of the D chord, and then at the end when we get back to the G chord, we're playing a classic Lester flat G run. Pretty fun, right? So when you're ready, we're gonna try all that together with the melody. Good luck. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Tony Rice? No, is Billy, Billy Strings? No, that was you. <laughs> and now it is up to you to take this knowledge and apply it to other songs, different chord progressions, and different keys. One of the best things that I think you can do is just listen to other guitar players out there in the bluegrass tradition and steal their ideas, steal their fills, their right hand patterns, and see what happens. And towards that end, I wanna help you out here with this guitar style chord index that you can grab over on Patreon. And right here in this video, Right now, I'm gonna play through every single major and minor chord with the basic boom chuck pattern so you can get it in your ears, get it in your fingers, and use this on whatever song that you want to. One, two, a one, two, three, four.
nice work, folks. If you made it here to the end, you know what to do. Click on some of these videos here on screen. The likes and subscribes are so much appreciated, as well as the patronage over on Patreon. Shout out to all you amazing patrons for making this video possible, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.